or can the Hungarians defend their world title? That's the big question. They look far from convincing in the semi-finals, so this is quite an open affair. On the far side in lane one, the experience of Andre Wilms and Andreas Hayek for Germany. Great Britain, Matthew Wells and Ian Lawson, they sculled really well in the semi-finals to get through to this medal opportunity. For Australia, Craig Jones and Peter Hardcastle, a new partnership, but very effective in lane three. Lane four, Agostino Abagnale in the bow there, continuing the dynasty, partnered today by Franco Berra. And then uh, in lane five, Milan Dolicek and Andre Sinek for the Czech Republic. And completing the uh, lineup closest to you in lane number six, here are the world champions, Akos Haller and sitting in the stroke seat, Tibor Petto. But they are in lane six, and uh, that tells you that uh, they were not the fastest by any means in qualifying for the final. Well, they only just scraped through, really. Uh, so they've got it all to do and um, not in the happiest of lanes either, so very difficult. Uh, last year's silver medalist, France, haven't made the final, so it's been quite an upset here. But the top of the picture from Germany, Wilms and Hajek, they're an interesting uh, double. They were in the quad that won last year. They're now back in the double and uh, the, they look very powerful. They've been looking very good right through the regatta and they do like sculling together. I remember Wilms was the gold medalist in the single in 1997, and both of these men were in the Olympic uh, gold medal cruise quads of 92 and 96. Indeed they were, Dan. They've got massive experience, the two 30-year-olds. But here, uh, by contrast, Matthew Wells and Ian Lawson and Chris Colleton, who looks after them, absolutely delighted to see them in the final. Well, it's a great job to have a, a British double back in, uh, in top-flight sculling because it's taken a long time since the days of uh, Bailey and Hart uh, to see uh, double scholars back in a final lineup here. Australia also new, quite young, and as always, technically very nice. They skull very nicely together. Do they have the power in the middle of the stroke when the pressure really comes on? Peter Hardcastle there in the stroke seat took a, a year off after Sydney. He was in the quad that finished in fourth place, now partnered by uh, Craig Jones, and they're just about vying for second place, but it is the champions closest to us who've got the early advantage, but down these water conditions certainly not easier, in fact uh, I would say they're getting more difficult. They are getting difficult very difficult indeed, but uh, the Hungarians really have to turn themselves around a little bit here, they're leading, leading the field there um, not according to the caption but they are certainly leading the field uh, with Germany, their main rivals there, who have just moved ahead Italians, well, <laughs> what would a world championship be, Dan, without an Abagnale involved? Well, Agostino's been doing very well. I mean, he, was, uh, he won the Olympics in, in gold, took a year off, and uh, uh, now here he is back uh, in very fine form again. Very, uh, a very powerful athlete. Czech pair of uh, Jolicek and uh, Sinek. Well, they were 11th in the Czech quad a year ago, so uh, now trying their fortunes as a double and you've got to say Dan that they've done well to get into the final well they were first at the world, in the World Cup in, uh, in Munich and they beat Hungary so they've been going very well actually this season so that's quite good but there are the Hungarians they are a very nice uh, nice double they move very sweetly together uh, but they are under a lot of pressure now from Germany at the top of the picture and there's another sense where they're very lucky in fact because just before this regatta in fact a couple of weeks before it most of the Hungarian squad was decimated by a sal salmonella outbreak and uh, these two were uh, down at the canoeing base in uh, Schegen and not uh, training in Budapest and therefore didn't have the offending piece of cake, I think it was, that uh, caused all the problem. Interesting upright position of the German scullers. That's very, um, very normal for the way they scull. They said very, they're very big, powerful men, so they do rely a lot on hard leg drive. You see there, quick look across there from Hajek just to see how they're doing, moving very, very fine, uh, very fast. Um, interestingly that normally we've got the fastest crews in the middle of the regatta but here we've got the leaders at the moment in the two outside lanes Hungary and Germany yes with Abenali and uh, Bella at the moment uh, just about in uh, third spot Agostino of course he was winning Olympic golds as far back as uh, 1988 in the Italian quad Germany at 38 strokes a minute. This is the way they like to go. Wilms won his, uh, his single title at 42 strokes a minute from the 1,000-metre mark. So this is the way they like to go. He normally strokes the quad. But these guys here, now hungry at 36 strokes a minute. Moving very sweetly. Quick look across there to see what they've got to do. They've got half a length to do. They've got half a length to make up 
now on Germany, but Italy are now coming through the middle there, putting on a lot of pressure with Australia tagging them very, very closely. Yes, the Germans certainly uh, with all the experience in the world. But I must say, Dan, uh, what's your view of the Hungarians? To me, they're sculling absolutely beautifully in these conditions. They're doing extraordinarily well from that outside lane. Very, very bouncy water. Uh, they're sitting there in the se in second position. They've really recovered from that terrible, terrible uh, semi-final and first round. And, in fact, World Cup as well. They just haven't really had such a good, a good time of it. But have the Germans gone too early? They've been up at 40 strokes a minute, trying to hold on to this lead, but Hungary are now beginning to push hard, and so too are Italy. Yes, that was a much quicker quarter by the Hungarians, 132-40, and uh, it's between these three, and uh, this is a great example of fair racing right across the course. Here we have the whole course represented, Germany on the far side, Ayek uh, and uh, Wilms in the uh, middle there. It's Abagnali and Berra, and closest to you now, it's Haller and Pito. And it's Pito and Haller who have moved into the lead. They have come through into the lead. Uh, but it's Italy there in lane four who are now tracking them. Can Italy get past? Can uh, Abagnale do that famous Abagnale final sprint and push back past Hungary? But Hungary are flying. Big breaths, moving well, but they are, they're, they're holding Italy and they're moving away again now. They're moving away from Italy. Italy cannot get back, but Italy are past Germany. Germany slipping back now into third position, uh, but in safe third position because there's no way that Australia are going to catch them there. Now the other two crews, Czech Republic and Great Britain, well uh, behind these for these four crews but it is as you said down the hungarians now who've got the grip on the race now they're not going to win by much because the italians are still coming at them as we go towards the line abignali and berra still pressing but every time they ask the hungarians a question the champions have got the answer and indeed the champions retain their title italy with the silver and germany take bronze ahead of australia with the czechs finishing ahead of great britain not a world best. Oh, and Dan, they're going in. Oh, that's a rare sight. Uh, let's, they've got to hold on to the boat. They've got to hold on to the boat. And the launch is there now. It's really dangerous at the end of the race when that happens, but the safety in very quickly as uh, Agostino reflects as do Andre Wilms and Andreas Hayek. Well, they took the lead there halfway through the race, moved very well, but I don't think they could quite maintain it. But they are back into the medals, and that's really very pleasing for them. Last year, uh, the, 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 the Germans ran out of steam. This year, this double did very well to take bronze medal. So, all's well that ends well for Hungary's sportsman of 2001, who might also retain that title when the votes are in for 2002. Their time, just over a second outside Chop and Spick's 99 World Best.